Well, the, the main reason for the study is to, is to try to see if um, we could simulate what happened with patients with this long QT syndrome disease. So long QT syndrome is a monogenetic disease. It's uh, the patients have the heart that works well, but have uh, genetic uh, mutations in one protein in the heart. And then the, the nice thing is that you can study the protein in the heart separately in the lab and see what happens to that protein. But to be able to see what happens in the heart of the patients, then we will attempt to use computer simulation. So that's a collaboration with IBM that, that, that we did that. So the, uh, the simple, simplest possible model in the heart is a cell. So, so that's very complex cell models that we, we can do. Of course, the, the heart has about 300 million cells. So this study was the first step. We had 200 cells that, uh, that simulated what happens across the wall of the heart. So what the electrical properties are across the wall of the heart. So it was, was uh, you know, one step above, you know, you don't have a cell, and you have connected 200 cells, and then we measure what the electrical properties of that was. So, so what, how, what, what was happening with your heart wall? So the cell model has many different proteins, ion channels, transporters, contractile proteins, everything is in, in the cell model. It's a very complex model. That's why you need a supercomputer to run the model. And, and then we go in and modify, every, leave everything the same, and you modify just that one protein that's mutated, which is exactly the same thing that's happening to the heart of the, uh, of the patients with long syndromes. syndrome. And then with the computer simulation, then we were able to predict which of these patients would do worse or better so that we went back to the clinical uh, aspects of the of the study and then we were, we were able to say patients with certain mutations uh, have a higher risk of having uh, cardiac events and having uh, and dying having sudden death than other patients you could think that can't you just get this information from the patient ECG you know you could think that like why you just go to the doctor you have an ECG so why don't you just what, what, what does the computer simulation gives it extra? And the, what we showed is that for the patient, it's very variable. So you can go to the doctor one day and your ECG shows one thing, and then you go to the doctor a year later and your ECG shows a different thing. And there's, there's great variability uh, between patients with the same mutation and between the same patient over time. So what we think that the, uh, this uh, simulated ECG is showing is, is like an average risk over your lifetime. So it gives you more information. So it's it's additive. So, so it's the first time that has that that computer simulations have been done at all to predict clinical risks. So that's why it's so important. I mean, it's very important for the long QT patients because then now we know of some mutations that are very high risk. But towards a general population, now we could use that to uh, predict the uh, risk in drugs. You know, you can you can think of um, uh, changes in disease that that that. Uh, can occur of ion channels that we can plug in a computer model. So, but it's it's the main reason why it's so important is because the first time that the simulated uh, uh, cardiac model has been used to predict clinical risk. I I definitely believe that's going to change. That in ten years time, the way the uh, drugs are given to people and the way that drugs are developed will be very different because of computer simulation.